praise the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the sanctity of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Can you collect? No! Yeah. Yeah, we are. Oh, yes, we are. Because we are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do Well, Tom Kyleton, I just thought that you saw a board of reforms in Australia now, Will. Shinea. Shinea. And the Warfat? I just, um, Cog me and I'm in God me to my confirmation. The Innes will come out. So I'll be able to Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought that you saw my name in your Oh yeah. Vi mäter en massa gummi här. Kapten Chini skulle man maga. Ja det här var. Det är det är det är det är det är det Okay, so a group of ladies with the name Gobbles. Gobbles. That's perfect. Okay, are we all No, don't. No, 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 no. Keep it simple. Okay. I'm saying God is feast day for this cultural walk. Some of you would probably have all the information already. For those of you who don't, I'm going to give you as much information as I have myself and tell you all about our wonderful patron saint, which is Saint Gobnet. So Saint Gobnet came from According to somebody I, I spoke to today, from Mayo, her people came from Mayo. She had a falling out with her father and because she wanted to become an abbess. And she left Mayo and ended up going to Clare for a period of time. And she became a pirate for a short period of time. And she went from there to the Aran Islands where she wanted to study um, as an abbot. Or an abbess, I suppose is the term. One night, while she was there, an angel appeared to her in a dream, in Ashling, and told her, this is not your resting place, and told her, you must go and find a place where there are nine white deer, and it is in that spot that you will build your temple, or your convent. So off she set on her quest, and she went to different places. Well, the first place that she ended up is in a place called Dool Queen, over beyond Dingle, and they have a holy well there and a church associated with her and today they also are celebrating her feast day and they have lots of activities over there at the moment today and I think there's a Kaylee on there tonight 
with Padre Gaucher. She left there then went to Mallow and to the parish of um, Drum Tariff. And they have a, a, a well there associated with her. There's an area in Mallow called Kilgobnet associated with her. She ended up going to Port Florida or uh, Waterford and there also they have a place associated with her. She went from there to, to Cluendroha, their neighbouring parish, where she spotted three white deer. So she knew she was on the right road, um, but she still knew it wasn't where she was meant to build her temple. And lo and behold, when she approached Bolivorna on the banks of Slawn, as the day broke and the sun was coming out and the mist was rising, what did she see on the banks of the river but her nine white deer? So, obviously, she was delighted with herself. And she followed the deer along the banks of the river and they brought her up through Creel Robnathan, which is just here around us. And she ended up in this area here, which is the townland of Gurt Tubrit. Now, a Gurt is the Irish word for a field. And a Tubber is the Irish word for a well. And lo and behold, but there are a couple of wells here. There's the, the primary well, which is down along the roadside here. You may have passed it on the way up. They excavated here, the UCC archaeology department did an excavation here in the 50s and also in the 60s and they discovered this well. At that time also they discovered um, an oven which is called a Falacht Fia and this is how the Celts um, cooked long ago where they used to heat up very big rocks or stones, they dug a hole, they filled it with water they, they put in the stones, they wrapped the deer or whatever meat they had up in straw and they put it in and covered it up and that's how they cooked their meat. Um, so there's a philosophy here as well. They also found smelting tools. Now smelting tools are stuff that a smith would use. So St. Gobnet was a smith by all accounts. Now there are different ideas as regards her name. People say that her name Gobnet comes from the word Gaw, G A B H A, is the Irish word for a smith, and G O B H sounds a little bit like it. So there is the belief that perhaps that's where she got her name. There's another belief going back to the Celtic era, um, on our mytho mythological um, world, where it is believed that she may have been a Celtic goddess, and she was a part of the Tuatha Dé Danann that arrived here. There were Miletians; they came up from Greece. And they travelled up and they settled at the foothills of the Paps Mountains. Gawhi Anan, Tadhaul Igiri, Egledach. And there's a, a, a holy well there, and there's also a site there of a, a saint, Krovyarag. Uh, and that happens on May Day. And it's believed that she was a part of that triad of, of Celtic goddesses. And the other goddess is in Colin, or she's a saint now and she's St. Latirnan. So there are different beliefs. However, the belief that we have here is that she was a Christian and she came here and she befriended or had always been a friend of Neva Bon, who's buried over here in Shana Fluin. And um, he was an abbot and he, was, he wasn't associated with any particular religious order, but he was a traveling <coughs> abbot who was um, spreading the, the, the word of Christianity. So as I say, she was a sixth century saint this was her original temple her kishten now i don't know but it's in a circular formation the walls are quite low i would imagine it might have been like a chronog you know with a, a, a straw um roof and that so i don't know how many people she could have fitted in there now we have a, a, another association with the saint finbar over in gugan barra and it's quite similar in structure to that a circular structure as well so this is where she set up her convent and where she brought people in and she healed people. She was a beekeeper. She kept bees. And here she is here, standing on a crico, which is the Irish for a, a beehive. And she kept bees because of the, the honey that they made. Honey has a lot of healing properties. And to this day, it's used in, in hospitals all over the world to heal sores of all sorts. So she used to heal the, the people who were sick with the honey, but she also used the bees for protection. So she would watch out for the local people, but especially for people who would come in and steal the farmers' goods or steal their, their cattle or whatever. And what did she do? But she'd open up the beehive and she'd set the swarm on the, the robbers. 
and by God, they weren't long <laughs> leaving the area. So there's another association with her here, but we're not going up on the walk today because it's too far of a walk for everybody. I did a half mile up the road here, and it's even higher up than what we are here. And it's a stone carving of a seat. And she used to sit there and oversee the whole land around. And she could see for miles people traveling in who weren't locals. She was like, a, it was like a lookout post. And from there, she used to set up her, her, her bees. Now, there's another <coughs> legend where she had a thing called a bulla. Now the bulla, it looks like a cannonball, but it's not a cannonball. It's made out of agate. Now there've been studies done on it. They don't have an idea where it came from. And that was kept um, for people who had sick animals. And in the community, if you had a sick cow or a sick um, horse, they would take this bulla home with them. And um, once your animal got better, they'd return it. But it went missing for a couple of decades, way back in the 1800s. Somebody in McCroom took it <laughs> and kept it. But anyway, it was returned. And it's stuck inside the wall of the of the old church, which I'm looking at the gable end here, and it's stuck in there for good and glory. And people come along and they rub their handkerchiefs to it or their scarves because they believe that they will, this will give them protection. It's used almost like a relic or an icon of, of her healing. And if you were sick, had a sore throat, you'd put it around your neck and um, you'd feel better. So this government, what is she to us? Well, she's our protector, I suppose. She has been our protector for how many years now? We're 2023 now, so she came here in the sixth century. She's been with us for that length of time. And she's given the community here a lot of um, hope down through the centuries. And you will come here morning, noon or night and you will get people praying to her. And they pray to her in, in a form um, which is called the round or thrust government. Thrust means a trip. So in this trip they, they visit nine different stations in the vicinity of the graveyard. And they say a series of um, prayers. And they say it, 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 seven, our Father, seven Hail Marys, seven Glory Bees. And you say them in a sequence. And you go back to the stations, couple of stations, you go back two or three times to that station. The whole thing takes about an hour, an hour and a half. You can do it for 21 days, you can do it for one day. Um, on that, if you do it for the 21 days, they say you should empty out the well below. Um, on the 21st day and if you empty it out a white fish should appear at the bottom of the well. I have heard of people who have been healed and there's a huge faith here locally. People come from far and near to pray for her, uh, to government for healing. So, and also I have met people here who have, have no religious belief but they come quite often because they feel there's something tangible here but something intangible and something tra that transcends um, religion. There's something in the waters, as it were. Uh, there's a spirituality here associated with, with, the, with the area. And they feel whoever this government was or is has left her mark on the place and on the people. So, see the, the piece of sculpture here? That was sculpted by a very famous Cork sculptor called Seamus Barkley. And that was erected in 1951. And there she stands in, for good and glory. Her face... It is said that he depicted the face to the likeness of the local women. Now, I don't know. I've been looking at her quite often, but I don't know who she looks like. I don't know the person anyway. Now, there's a prayer we recite to St. Gobnet, and it's written here, and it says, Gomani diagot a hobnet nefa, Gomani murgot agus banim feindot, is chutza a hornuk, a gram a shkirlat, agus a girig malais, er Sunday. So we. we Gomani means we, we bless you, St. Gobnet, and we come to you looking for a cure for our illness. So um, people recite that quite a bit. Other people have written prayers and poems. I have one beautiful prayer here that Siobhan Bani Kelly wrote, and Cor Hule actually sing it. So if, if um, Joe and uh, Deirdre and those wouldn't mind, I'm going to just read it out for you here. Let's find it here. No matter what, no matter what, no matter what. A hoplet arsa is to our bathroom. And the beauty of this poem, if you didn't know anything else, it tells you the whole story. The whole story is in this. 
A robnus arse is to our bathroom. Gunnort godelat is to the Hallinog. Vehig shul no drochte, go vikfa in rupa. Er vun tan ur las, nay eena bawn. Er the hushko aring or hushis dunhin. Dan shall sonatan is vanic cock, is hug dear so last dot, er the league of woos green. A robnet naifa, moon tall de ruin. Madin rochte, a malavurne. Is in green and douche of the Vruch Salon, the Yakisha Nunot, a Vuntan Urlas, in the League of Kungal, Ne Vienna Bon. The Yet the Frisch dig a Dulish Gohishel, the Hahas fear yart a swig mulladay, Gret Count Schriebergut, the Hampel Even, Mara Mech the Screen Elm is the Hart Fendry. A Robnet Firul took the call of his clort. Let Vacha Untach is let Hoppel Bon. For a Ruiger Waller, our flag is her Achen, is to her father farshing with Gachbach Don, or her dear going to the inner Gurum, is Shulanish Mara Hulish Traw, Danig or a Minter, the art in the main sheet, for TV the Rishroth a Robnet Hod. A Robnet Naifa, who food of Regacht, is her and Gadi Kailed of Er Argor Gabrach. Her the hubber bower either shing is the sailtucht, is let vola aesta cur our nose confine. Nach even done winter, our sheeta clavelet, is really naif a cush the hubrid ra, maravel low in the diga, lem mahus and aeron, or vyog and cush came, contar. I love it so. She protected the area from plague during the time of the famine. She blessed the whole surrounding parish and people didn't die from plague here. One man one night came in and stole all her instruments and tools and stole her white horse and he absconded. And in the morning he woke up and he realised he'd gone nowhere. He was going around in a circle, <laughs> all around the circle, and the local people captured him. But lo and behold, they took a death mask of his face, which I will show you, and it's at the, hanging on the gable end of the church here. Now, that's one of the legends. She, see the church here now? There's no, that was the original Shepel Balavuna, Shepel Malavuna. When Cromwell came to Ireland, he was going around burning down all the Catholic churches. So they came and the Protestants, they built their Protestant church right in the heart of the Catholic community. So this particular day anyway, a message came that he was on the way to burn down the church. And what did the local people do? They organised a couple of Mehila people. And they took down the roof of the church and they hid the wooden structure down below in the village of Balavurna or Balavakira, behind, do you know where, where Cobble and on, on, um, Tiktorna, Scandalous Pub? Yes. Up there somewhere. And that area, that village was called Corriganimit and it was part of the of the address and the, the, of, of the post office there was of the fish Corriganimit. In actual fact, a lot of people still use Corriganimit in their, in their address. And it's now bonded here, but it was called Corrigan Island. But they never put the roof back up again, and they built another church where it is now. So, would you like to go down now, and we'll, we'll visit her grave, and we'll continue on. On far shore, I said, he's just telling me about an incident that happened to him. How long ago? Five years ago. He was up at Sheep. With his quad up at the mountain, yeah, yeah, up near the top of Coombe. I don't know if you know where the top of Coombe is. You were drawing timber, okay, timber. Yeah, yeah. and his quad overturned on top of him. Oh my god, and he was uh, how long were you there? Yeah, from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the day till 6 o'clock in the evening. Yeah. And he started doing the round to St. Yeah. Abbey in his mind, and he was calling for help, but there was nobody yeah. coming. Do you want to? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, a car passed you. You could hear a car. Yeah, car came into but the he yard. passed and he didn't hear him. Yeah. 
and it was only lo and behold by pure accident that yeah. that the man who passed came back again for some other reason and found him yeah that's right and yeah. your devotion because i know you yeah. come here quite a yeah, bit I to do, pray yeah. to think of yeah, it yeah. so you're convinced to think of it i am dead, deadly convinced that thing from saying there you go i had about half my round made when i had this car coming into the yard and it shouldn't be there because it was getting late and so forth but they, anyway uh, that's just, uh, they, he spotted me, they never left another show. It's such I a lovely story. Like that when, uh, I was, but I, I knew I was going to die. Yeah. Because I wouldn't do it. Were you badly injured? I wasn't injured at all. You weren't injured at all? No. It's bananas. No. Only. Yeah. 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 Too cold, you'd have been cursed. You'd have been in that way, like. Yeah, hypothermic. Well, boy, I guess I got this. I guess boy, I guess I did. Tattoo sunish. And she didn't prove it. Girl, me, the maggot. Girl, maggot. Girl, maggot. Girl, maggot. Girl, maggot. So I know, and I know people are praying, so I am conscious of that too. So I don't want to be over taking over the whole day, to be honest. Because it's lovely to have everyone here. But this is for St. Gobbins' Berry. And like people come here, as I said, they come and they leave stuff in Thanksgiving. The travelling community of Ireland have a great belief in St. Governor's Powers and they will, they are here generally, maybe today, but also on, on Whit Sunday. They tend to come a lot on Whit Sunday because that's the other patron day for St. Governor is on Whit Sunday. Those two days, on her feast day and on Whit Sunday, there's a statuette, an oak statuette. It's about two feet long in the parish church he's in Olivorna, and that's exposed for those two days to the public to come and take what they call tos gobletan now tos is the irish word for measure and they measure the statuette with a piece of ribbon or you, you could have a scarf or a sock or anything that would take the length and they do that they put it around her head around her waist around her feet and they take that with them as a kind of a, a healing um it's not a relic because I, I, I had this conversation with the priest. He said, a Relic is not, it's, not, it's actually an icon of, of, of St. Government. Mm. But people do take it. I gave one to my son going away to Australia to keep him safe. And um, so that's happening all day long down in, in, in the church. So when we go down to the, um, to the well in a minute, you'll see all these ribbons hanging, and that's what they are. So people will leave them in Thanksgiving. So you'll, you'll find different remnants of life and Celtic life and our lives as people around this very ancient site. You have a bro here, and a bro is a, a quern that they used to grind um, into flour long ago. So you'll see all kinds of remnants of our past life. The other thing I think about here is we're walking on our ancestors' uh, footsteps. They've left their spirits here before us. So every time I walk around here, it, it's ancient land and it's ancient. You, you, you feel it in the water. You feel that you're never alone here, even though you might be alone, but you're not really because you, people need their feelings here, you know, and I think that that, that enhances your experience of the place, really. So we go down and I'll show you where the, um, the God is over. So be sure on, on, on Shepiel Prost so Togog and Shepiel he's in Malibuni so this was the parish church before the church in Malibuni was it and this is the church where they took off the, the wooden beams and hid them below in, in the village of Malibuni which was known as Corrigan Island after that and um, this is also where they took the death mask of the Gothic Dove now Dove in the Irish terminology doesn't mean that he was a black man as in you know being black white yellow whatever though at the uh, in our language means something bad so he was a bad man is what it means more than anything else and godly obviously is the irish word for a robber or a thief so if you look up here that's the stone facing mm -hmm. the godly do you see it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that was put up there uh, to frighten people, to ward people off. Now, some people say a lot of our cust these customs could be pagan, you know, but sure, even if they are, if they give hope to people, does it matter, pagan or otherwise? Do you know what I mean? If, and, and, and I suppose it is a kind of a ritualistic thing if you think about it. Uh, the only thing I will say is that for people who do the round, and I, as I said, I, I hadn't done it myself until about four years ago, there's something very, you know the way they have this thing now, uh, mindfulness, 
Mm. It's a great buzzword for the last two years. You know. Are you into mindfulness? But I think our ancestors had mindfulness long ago, and there was nobody calling it mindfulness. Mm. So because you kind of go into a meditative state when you are praying um, and saying and thinking, putting positive. It's the power of unity, really, isn't it? Putting positive thoughts out there to, to the universe. And if you have is one person as opposed to a hundred people thinking the same thought, well then that that's multiplied a hundred times that thought, and it's putting that positivity out there. So I think our ancestors had much more. They were much more in tune than what we were. Maybe we're getting it back now that we're we're more inclined to seek out that solace and that silent time and to be with ourselves and to be mindful. There's one little thing here. So if you want to go back... Now, I don't know whether you want to go back out. I'll tell you about it. So it's been known that that if you want to... T- if for women who were maybe having problems having um, getting pregnant, they would come and they'd do a round. And then the last bit of the... They'd come up here and they'd rub their hand. <laughs> I'm OK, I'm safe. I've had my two. <laughs> There's no fear of me. So they'd rub their hand on this structure out here. And that is a shield in the gig, which is a fertility... Um, I, what do you call it? A relic? Symbol. Icon. Icon. Is that what you call it? Yeah. So Sheila the gig is out here now. And that's what people... Uh, so yeah, so we go back out to the buller now. Does anybody want to be asking me any question or anything? No, you're doing good. No, you're doing yeah. 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 The, during the time, so the... the, the they were the chieftains here called the O'Hurleys. And they were the chieftains of the area. And they were known as the keepers of the shrine. They kept the shrine... Uh, safe, and they also kept the the wooden statuette that's done in the in the church. They were the people who were the custodians of that. There was also a golden statue of Saint Gumnet, but it went missing because when the when Cromwell came, they had to flee. These there was two priests in in the O'Hurley clan. They had to flee, and uh, that since then this golden statuette. It's gone missing. Yeah. 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 Was it? Oh, well, no. That's it there now. So this is the, the last station of the the, um, hook, the round. So when you're doing the round, um, this is the last station of the round where you recite. And I don't know, uh, the top of it, obviously. Um, did, you see, did you see these? This lady came all the way from Tipperary today. <laughs> So uh, it tells you here, number one to number ten. And so we're down at number ten here now. And it tells you, so number one to ten, it tells you what to do and how many prayers. Prayers recited at each station, seven our fathers, seven holy Marys and seven glory bees. But you have to return to some stations twice or three times. And at the very last station, this is a station, but if you decide to do the 21 day, which is called the Novena, um, you empty out the well of water and it's according to folklore or whatever and um, you're supposed to see a white fish now i've never emptied out the well so i don't know whether that's I mean, would it be possible to empty out the well mm-hmm. oh it have people do it they yeah. do it with a bucket people do empty out the well it would actually go yeah dry. they bring a bucket it would go dry yeah and they do empty out the well yeah. you for the sunrise that's correct yeah should you do it yeah, yeah. and did you find the white fish no, no. But the other thing with the nine Oops. white deer, nine white deer is a Celtic sign of purity. Nine of anything. But it, it, it's very much a Celtic thing. The sign of purity is nine white deer. So, um, so as I said to you, the, the Celtic beliefs of spirituality is intermingled or fitifuta with the Christian. And it's a funny thing as well that this is the 11th of February. St. So Bridget's Day is the first, but this is the month of Inbuck. And in both being the, the renewal of life and the renewal of newness. And don't we all feel it? There's a freshness, isn't there? And we're always saying there's, there's a grand stretch in the evening, you know? And even today, it's not even cold, so there, there is a newness about The buds are starting to, to appear, the daffodils are coming up. So maybe it's ourselves as well that we're renewing our own way of thinking and spirituality. I don't know. That's only me now talking. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, people then bring their, their uh, this lady has her bottle, they bring the water. You can drink the water actually, the water's quite nice, in fact. So um, for anybody who'd like to take a drink. Now, if 
you go back down the road here, which I want you to go walk down with you, because I have to my car. There's a mass altar. There's a, a mass rock. Do you see it on the left hand side as you go down? And it's a piece of stone carved into an altar. So that was used during the time of um, the famine and that era that would have been used. This road up here is known as Cain the Minister. A Cain means a stick, and the minister means the minister who was a Protestant minister. The house in here was the Protestant minister's house. The, that church was given back to the local community in the 40s and it's unconsecrated. So it's only been used for music recitals. A few movies have been done here, a few film movies. It has been used for. And um, coming back to St. Gobnet then, I told you about the statue, but there's been a, there's a very famous artist, Irish artist called Harry Clark. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he has done a very famous um, window, a stained glass window with her face on it inside in the Hone and Chapel in UCC and she's also depicted over in the oratory in Gugan Barra in, in, in that oratory there's a lovely stained glass window of her there too um, so yeah um, I don't think I have any much much else to say about her now